let's talk about Fleetwood Mac Rumors, another all-time great album. Uh, what do you have to say about that album as far as maybe the first time you heard it? Uh, what makes it great? And why does it mean so much to you? Yeah, um, that album for me, I always, you know, when we were setting up this to talk about this, th thinking, you know, my top five records, wow. Rumors is always there. It's okay. where, where Metallica is like a sort of a genre and I can think of it as a, from a drummer standpoint, as a young drummer and stuff. Uh, rumors is like just, you know, from front to back, the best collection of songs. And it, it, for me, it wasn't so much that, which is, which is everything. I mean, the most incredible songs. Um, when I found out that what was going on during the creation of that record, that there was all these relationships going on. And um, to know that th there's these two different couples in the band that are divorcing or breaking up, or in some instances, sleeping with each other, you know, like they were <laughs> going back and forth with band and, and a lot, a lot of heavy drug use within all that chaos too, you know, a, tons of heavy drug use. And just when you hear the lyrics on that record, every song is like kind of written to somebody else in the band and just picturing that they were in the studio at that time, like drug fueled, like you were saying, uh, but like staring across the room at somebody and singing those lyrics about somebody. And then that person is harmonizing with them, singing along with them. It's just, it's the most dramatic record to me. Um, you know, as, as far as like really laying your, your, uh, your, your soul, soul out yeah. world you know, to, about your relationship. And, oh Jesus. Man, I'm sorry, dude. This is the most child interwined interview ever. But it's all good, man. We're we're uh, giving the people what they want. They they want they want to see what life is like. You know, this is yeah, kid throwing stuff. That's why I keep moving around my house, as I'm sure people will see. But I'm trying to keep it as quiet as I can. But yeah, Fleetwood Mac rumors. Um, you know the reason I named that as one of my favorite records is just lyrically. To be writing that stuff about one another in the band. Now I gotta move it. To be writing that stuff about band members uh, while they're sitting across from you <laughs> in the studio, to be on that, you know, that many drugs at the time. And just for each member of the band to like, to be such strong, active songwriters on each song on the record. I mean, it's it's the perfect record um and it was one of those records again like i was talking about injustice for all that was when i was young as a drummer it, that was just one of those instant things but it was i think rumors is one of those records that um as i became older and uh, you know i guess more knowledgeable in songwriting and just all that kind of stuff it just became i kind of got how important that record was you know to not just as a drummer, but as a songwriter. That's that's kind of like the songwriter record for me. The the relationships in that band were so bad that none of the members actually talked outside of working on music in the recording studio. Like they had zero relationship, and right. they would clock in together, and mm -hmm. they were able to shut off the personal stuff, and just like they went to work, and you know they don't like their job, and it doesn't matter. They they would clock mm -hmm. in. And it was just other musicians working on their craft to make the best songs, to make the best album they can. Right. And, and when they left, it's, that was it. They weren't friends. They didn't talk. And, and it's so wild to be able to turn off and turn on those things and be that, that much of a professional as a musician. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Oh so, uh, to 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 <laughs> I cannot find a place in this house quiet. There is no escaping. Which Especially, is. so just to give you some um, context here, I'm by myself this weekend. My wife is away in Florida, so I've got my kids, my stepkids, and my baby. So I'm trying to make this interview happen, walking around the house all while doing this. So if people are listening to this, I, I apologize. 
try my best. No, man, you're doing awesome. I, again, I'm horrible at multitasking. So I, I, you're keeping the conversation going. I would not, I would not be able to focus at all. So uh, you're, you're doing awesome. When, so when I was, I actually came across this album because uh, Rolling Stone magazine put out their list of 500 greatest albums of all time. And I actually listened to all 500 of them. So this took me like a year. Like that's, I don't know, that's hundreds and hundreds of hours. And they had out of all the albums of all time, they had rumors at number seven, the seven seventh greatest album of all time. And when you look at all all time great album lists, Rumors is always there in the top 10 universally, universally agreed upon as one of the greatest albums of all time. Uh, yep. And I remember listening to it and being so impressed. I, I was already familiar you're with the four hit singles, um, but I, I didn't know the deeper cuts on the album, but I, I was really impressed with how eclectic the music is. It's like sure. all, the, all the musicians in that band are amazing songwriters themselves and they bring a different voice and a different sound and a different style and they have yeah. such different instrument instrumentation instrumentation yeah they Instrum they'd have one piano bass one acoustic guitar bass one electric bass more one more synthesizer mm -hmm. one song was like acoustic or pop and um I, I was so impressed it was just like such a wide breadth of of great music a great collection yeah. of songs so i, I sure. can't say good I, I can't say enough good things about that album me too. I agree with you. Yeah, it's it's the full package. Um, I mean, it stands up, you know, like still I could put that whole record on today and, you know, from start to finish, just every song is a complete classic. And then again, as a drummer, um, it, it, the playing is so unique, the way that um, Mick adds to those songs. There's a, I don't know, he's, he's such a unique drummer. You could tell that he's more in that band than just the drummer, that he's a principal songwriter as well. There's there's parts of that song where he's playing on his uh, you know kick and snare do do get do do get and then he'll go to his floor tom with the snare do do boom do do boom and it's uh, there, he does that a lot on those records, especially that record that the snare and floor tom together gives it some weight that I don't know if um like a lot of people even hear that he's doing that but um yeah he, he's such an important part of that band and such a integral drummer you know i, I think you know he's, he's not the most flashy drummer in the world but like it's, it's like ringo star like trying to play a fleetwood mac song properly is um you know it takes a certain you really got to pick up on all the nuances just like with ringo star <laughs> you hear my son in the back yelling i cannot yeah. get well he can't get enough of you, which is, that's nice. You know? Yeah. That's all. That's, that's all good. Uh, I, I, so over the years, Mick Fleetwood has said that rumors is the band's most important album they ever made because it allowed them to continue recording for years afterwards. It was like such a monumental six. It stayed at number one for over half a year. Like despite every week, new albums coming out, nothing could be thrown it for half a year. I mean, you, you don't see that anymore. That's like, <laughs> Un unparalleled yeah. um when looking into this album so i'm always looking at who who the musicians were playing on it who the producers who mixed it all that stuff and the the producer so i see the name ken calais ken calais and i'm like okay that last name is is not super uh apparent all the time you don't see that and there's there's a singer that a platinum singer colby calais have you ever heard of Colby Calais? So she had a huge song called Bubbly and Realize. She had a hit with Jason Mraz called Lucky. Right. Um, I've seen her in concert. Uh, that's oh. actually he. That's actually the father of Colby Calais. So the producer oh, of wow. Fleetwood Mac Rumors is the father of the multi-platinum singer-songwriter Colby Calais, which I did not know until uh, this deep dive interview, which is pretty cool. Huh. I didn't know that either. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. And I have a, a quick, funny story about Colby Calais. So uh, I was living in Toronto and a friend from Ottawa, Ottawa was coming to visit me and we were going to time it with a concert that he wanted to see in Toronto. So I sent him a list of like the next three months, what's coming. And it's like, you could pick Coheed and Cambria. You could pick all these badass bands. And he says, I want to go see Colby Calais. <laughs> and, you know, I like Colby, but it's like of all the concerts, you know. Right. So he chooses that one. So him and I, 
two dudes go see Colby Calais, you know, soft rock. And at one point she does a cover of the Pussycat Dolls, Don't Ya. So the song, you know, Don't You Wish Your Girlfriend Was Hot Like Me. So yeah. when that song is done, there's a moment where there's silence between when they finish and when they start up the next song. And I decide to yell out in the silence with like 3000 people. I yell out, I wish my girlfriend was hot like you. And the whole crowd gasped because they assumed like I had a girlfriend with me. And Colby on stage actually like covers her face and goes, I'm sure your girlfriend is very nice. Like she had to defend my hypothetical girlfriend that wasn't there because I was there with a dude. So and then I saw a review the next day where they reviewed the show and they said, you know, Colby Calais even did a a um, a fiery ver a fiery cover of the Pussycat Dolls Don't Show, which prompted a uh, audience member to yell out whatever. So it's actually it made the news the next day, which was pretty. Yeah. Cool. So anyways, a random Colby Calais story, uh, which has, you know, ties in with her producer father who produced this album. So some random stuff for you there. Well, hold on. I'll tell you another random thing mentioning the Pussycat Dolls that you probably don't know. Um, so years and years ago, uh, touring with the band, with, with Finger Eleven, we were touring with the band Days of the New. If you remember those guys. Acoustic, right? They're mostly acoustic rock? Uh, yeah. So back in the day, they had this singer uh, with them. Travis is the, the singer of that band. He used to have this backup singer in the band that, you know, we, when we were on tour, I met a bunch of times. And I do remember her name was Nicole. And like years later... Um, I was watching Pussycat Dolls, all these like videos when that band became what they were. And I was like, man, that girl looks so familiar. And I, I kind of Googled it. And Nicole Scherzinger. Yeah, she used to be the backup singer for Days of the New. Wow. Came from, yeah. So uh, we had toured with them and that girl was uh, singing on stage with Days of the New, which is so bizarre, man. But yeah, there it Days is. Days of the New was awesome. It's like they were metal, but they played acoustic guitar. Like they had badass, badass riffs, but on acoustic. I think yeah. it was Touch, Peel and Stand was like the big hit single. There was a couple more. Um, so we were, we were talking about the best-selling albums of all time. So we were talking about uh, Michael Jackson, Thriller, The Eagles, Greatest Hits. So Rumors has sold 40 million albums uh, globally, which in the US, it's the 11th best-selling album of all time. So this is like a all-time great best-selling album. I actually, just for fun, went back and found a few original reviews of the album, which I think paint a picture for our listeners. So our well, listeners that have not heard this album, I have a few quick quotes that might get you to go and, and listen to this album in, in, in a bit here. So um, in a retrospective review, All Music said the record was an unparalleled blockbuster because of the music's quality. He then concluded, each tune, each phrase regains its raw, immediate, and emotional power, which is why Rumors touched a nerve in 1977 and has since transcended its era to be one of the greatest, most compelling pop albums of all time. And I have a, a, a couple more here. Slant Magazine said Fleetwood Mac drew on romantic dysfunction, which is what you talked about, and personal turmoil to create a timeless five-star record. Stylist Magazine said what distinguishes Rumors, what makes it art, is the contradiction between its cheerful surface and its anguished heart. Here is a radio-friendly record about anger, recrimination, and loss. And final review, the BBC said it is a near-perfect album. And this is like my favorite quote. It says, the album is like a thousand angels kissing you sweetly on the forehead. Damn. Uh, if ever I could get a review of one of my albums, something like that, that is like all-time great review. That's the quote you want for your record, for sure. Uh, yeah, it's so true, man. And... uh it's a beautiful album. Like it's, you know, you can't say an album, you can't say many albums are beautiful, but there's something about that album as a whole that there's like this beauty to it. And I, I wanted to, when you were asking me about these records today to pick through, I was trying, you know, cause there's so many records, but part of that um, trying to figure out what I would choose was that like from start to finish thing and rumors and, and justice for all have that, you know, turn it on and leave it on till the end. And then let it play again. So all killer, no filler. Yeah. Like some 41, like Derek told us. Yeah. So I guess the last thing I would say about that album, um, do you, do you remember uh, a couple of years ago when the song dreams went viral again because of a TikTok video? Do you remember this at all? I don't. So 
during the pandemic, mm. a, a random dude goes skateboarding. So it's a short clip on TikTok. Uh, this older, older, you know, I don't know, older gentleman gets on a skateboard. The song Dreams is playing in the background and he's skateboarding down a slope and he's drinking ocean spray, um, oh, I, like cranberry yeah. juice or whatever. And yes. it, it was like a vibe, like a chill skateboarder, just, you know, hydrating himself, listening to the song. And yeah. that video went so viral that the song back in like 77 was a number one global hit. It became a top 10 hit globally again, all these years later. And wow. it was so popular that the band itself kept recreating that video. So then, you know, um, uh, Stevie Nicks made a video of instead of skateboarding, it was her rollerblading, drinking ocean spray. And then ocean spray got involved and sponsored the band. And that, that guy was sent like a truckload of ocean spray that went viral. And, uh, anyways, it, it's funny. The, the band had a massive resurgence resurgence. And when you listen to radio in 2020, you would hear like all current songs and, and dreams like dreams was a legit, like it was a new hit again in 2020. Right. It was wild. Yeah. That when you said that, I remember that all comes back to me. It's so funny. The ocean spray of all like awful unhydrated, uh, unhy like cranberry <laughs> juice or something. Yeah, yeah. Like sugar and yeah, but that's cool, man. I remember that. Yeah. Killer album, killer everything. 